G'day, I'm Rowan from Sunju, a family owned 100% Australian company that is absolutely passionate and dedicated to making sure that you've got the most up to date news as far as uh, making sure that you're not carrying around fire ants or keeping them away from, from your property, everything to do with fire ants. We have six products that are registered by the APVMA to control fire ants uh, there's all sorts of different uses depending on what it is that you need to do we're always available to have a chat about that but today I just want to go through biosecurity fire ant emergency order number three 2024 which is the number three relates to the fact that we've had three updates this year so far we're only into uh, what are we March and and we've already had three updates so make sure to check back often when when this uh, emergency order relates to you because it does change quite a bit so uh, the order itself is in four parts and it it is uh, quite dry going as a lot of these type of documents are uh, what I'm going to do is break it up so that we do it uh, part by part so four parts four videos on it this this first part uh, really uh, is is preliminary it it has uh, a um, a list of what what is in every part um, some of these things lots of people will need to know this list here they're all of the uh, all the products that that the order applies to and there could be others you just need to be uh, aware of that and when we look down further here we come to emergency zones the whole of the state of New South Wales now is known as the New South Wales Protection Zone. Makes sense? It's where we are trying to keep the fire ants out of. Then we've got the New South Wales Fire Ant Infested Area. So currently that's Wardell and Mwilumba. We have the Queensland Fire Ant Infested Area, which depending upon which map you are looking at, uh, the uh, the Queensland um, National Fire Ant Program, uh, the areas marked in yellow, that is the Queensland fire Queensland fire ant infested area. If you're looking on the New South Wales DPI map, it's the areas in pink, that is New South Wales fire ant infested area. Then we've got fire ant movement control areas. And again, that is going to be Wardell and Mwilumba. So in New South Wales, any area that has had an outbreak of fire ants, they may have been controlled, maybe not, but they become a fire ant movement control area and they are also a New South Wales fire ant infested area. So that's Wardell and Mwilumba. Then there's a little green bit on the very bottom of this map that is an area where fire ants have been found in Corumban in Queensland it's only about 1.5 k's across the border so when drawing the little 5 k radius map then we get that little area that is inside New South Wales so hopefully this clears it up. The entirety of New South Wales is a protection zone. We have New South Wales fire ant infested area, fire ant movement control areas, and then we've got the Queensland fire ant infested area. Simple. I had hair before I started doing this. Anyway, let's continue Very on. Helpful at the uh, fire ant hotline, which is 1800. 680244. Uh, Wendy is fantastic there. She's, um, she will sort out any questions that you've got within her, her purview. So um, they're the zones and that was very um, 
was very confusing. They've clarified it somewhat. Uh, now, now, I think that number 10 here is one of the most important parts of this because it talks about preventative conditions. And so that means that if you are going to store any of those uh, products, like let's take, for example, hay or uh, turf, if you are going to store those for any uh, period of time, then you need to be storing it in preventive, preventative conditions. So that could be on a concrete slab. So if you've got a big concrete slab to put those things on, then Yahoo! Most people won't have a concrete slab. It's going to be a hard stand area, and that might be... It could be clay, it could be road base, whatever it is... Um, as long as it's unbroken compacted ground but not sand or gravel and there are there are reasons around that because of the from the pesticide uh, angle uh, that we won't won't go into but it needs to be unbroken compacted ground there's not sand or gravel the entire surface and edges of which are treated by fenthrin to create a horizontal and perimeter pesticide barrier so uh, that's done within APVMA permit 14317 which specifies uh, how to do that with the bifenthrin product. Um, our bifenthrin product Antagonist Pro is fantastic for this use. It's a polymer enhanced bifenthrin and it will last the longest of all bifenthrins and so you would get a, a good time frame from that product in this situation uh, once you've got your hard stand either treated or it's concrete then you put your product on it then you can cover with a tarpaulin um, it's uh, what does it say here um, covered in a manner sealed with plastic wrapping covered with tarpaulin or shade cloth or insect netting um, so you can use any of those things. I'd be going to tarp. Most people have a tarp that will cover it. Uh, so straight over the top. Then around the perimeter of that tarp, you need to uh, be putting in a barrier as well uh, to stop fire ants entering from around that perimeter. That perimeter is going to be on your hard stand, but uh, it, it's the perimeter of the, the tarp or other other type of uh, cover that you've got so that's that's a really important thing that preventive conditions you could also in theory make that preventative condition in a vehicle or on a vehicle if you had uh, a, a say a truck that's delivering turf flatbed truck and you were able to treat with bifenthrin as per uh, the uh, APVMA permit 14317 then that truck say for example you know your flatbed truck if you were to be able to spray that flatbed uh, treat all under the undercarriage everywhere to ensure that there aren't any fire ants then you've got a hard stand area you've got a preventive condition and so you will be able to take your turf uh, and there are uh, other things that turf growers will know that they have to do with their turf before they actually even uh, harvest uh, but you'll be able to take that product and put it into the into the truck being a preventative condition on the truck uh, we can clarify feel free to give us a call our our details will be at the end of the of the video uh, so that's the preventive condition there we go the edge is treated with bifenthrin to create a perimeter pesticide barrier permit 14317 um, that's the one that you need to uh, be be aware of there so thanks very much for your time we will uh, be going through parts two three and four in separate videos hopefully we've been of some help to you remember it's it is a living document it changes regularly it's always good to go back to the uh, dpi 
website and uh, make sure that you're dealing with the right version. Thanks for your time. We'll see you on the next one.